With news installment of Ninja Theory's long-awaited sequel, Hellblade 2 Senua's Saga, officially released, most fans are wondering, is it worth playing? When the embargo released the hour before the game's official drop, we were bombarded by media and fanboys battling over whether this game should be considered a generational title or the worst game ever invented. As an avid gaming chat as myself, I think it's important for me to break through the mold of the fanboy and give you my take on whether this game is worth your time and money. And by the end of the video, you'll either know if Hellblade exceeds expectations or fails to meet the goals set by the fans. Does Hellblade 2 reach the same standards set by its predecessor? Have we finally seen what a next-gen game actually looks like? Let's take a brisk walk through the mountains, hear the many voices in Senua's head, and jump right into this. With Hellblade 2 being officially released, the expectations were pretty high, especially being part of the acquisitions under Microsoft and being considered a AAA game adding to the Xbox lineup. Being someone that has played the original Hellblade, I feel that it gives a good perspective on how you should look at this game if you're debating on purchasing this product. And rate this not just as a sequel to an original title, but as an overall experience. So let's start off with the good. And when you look at this game, the biggest and most important feature that should be noticed right off the bat is its stunning visuals of this title. In this next gen era of gaming with games like Forza, Horizon Forbidden West, Ghost of Tsushima, I can confidently say Hellblade 2 is either at the same level of the best of these games, or in some cases, even surpasses them in the level of detail and visuals. What you say is heresy. I'm not bullshitting you. This game had me actually stunned with the level of graphic fidelity that it had when you look at the cutscenes and just the straight up motion capture. The mix between combat and cutscenes was nearly identical, and it just seemed like it was a seamless experience. I was very impressed, and it just reminds me of the same camera work that I saw with God of War and Halo Infinite. It's more of a personal touch when it comes to observing Sinua's actions and the fact that the mocap of Hellblade 2 took roughly 70 days to complete compared to the original seven days is pretty wild. Now, of course, there are people going to say, but Mars, it's 30 FPS. How can it be a next gen game? And yes, the expectation of most games releasing nowadays should be to get to a 60 FPS. But let's be real. How many next gen console games with visuals in 4K run a stable 60 FPS? The quick answer is no one. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth had both performance and graphics mode, but can only get to 60 FPS in performance mode with a sub 4K visuals. Starfield, half a year ago after its release, finally gets a 60 FPS mode and it doesn't actually fully get there even at a lesser resolution. Rise of Forbidden West, one of the best looking games of this generation by far, has the same issue. Which makes me sick to my stomach that we can't get one thing that was actually promised this entire console generation. And that was to say that this gaming generation will all be 60 FPS with 4K gaming. But I digress. The point of me having a childlike temper tantrum is to state the obvious. Hellblade 2 visually is stunning. And even the crew over at Digital Foundry were frothing at the groin, talking about how the graphical fidelity of this game was one of the biggest steps forward compared to any game they've seen. And they even made the bold take that as time progresses, we could see a possible 60 FPS mode but I will have to see it to believe it. On a PC, you can adjust your FPS counter and even lower settings to get the rate more consistent, so it's assumed that with more updates, this could possibly happen to consoles, hopefully. I think other than the actual look of the game, Hellblade gives the best audio design of any game I've ever played. I know it's a bold take, but when you actually play the original, this kind of makes sense, because Ninja Theory has gone the extra mile to make it so that you are getting an entire immersive experience. Senua basically is a character that has schizophrenia and is going through emotional trauma that she has had throughout her entire life because of the loss of her lover and abuse from her father. So basically throughout her entire journey, she is constantly hearing voices in her head, either supporting her decisions or talking complete crap against her, putting her down. Now, ever since I started playing, I started to feel like I had voices in my head like I was Randy Orton, squirming around, freaking out like I was about to give an RKO to a Viking Raider. But if you look at the work that Ninja Theory did to make this experience as thorough as it was, it's honestly incredible. When the voice is speaking on different sides of your headphones, to always giving you some comments on what's being said in Senua's thoughts while events are actually happening are giving you feelings of doubt or assurance, which expands the storytelling even more. What I really liked about the audio development 
was the ability to have so many perspectives of the characters given with its vast array of audio design that it completely immerses you in the game itself. Like with the narration, it goes so hard in what they're trying to have you feel by the end of the game, and with all the added whispers and just fantastic music, I was honestly blown away. Ninja Theory was really going for that emotional feeling when playing the title, and a lot of that comes with the work from the audio design that is not really touched on by many games in this current era. I think the only other game that sort of hits this hard was The Last of Us Part 2 with the music and audio design that make you feel the emotional connection that you build when killing enemies. I mean, if you remember back in the day when that game first released, after every death, they would cry for help or call to their friends like you just wiped out their entire friend group. I mean, that was pretty brutal. I feel like people always look past the impact that music as well as audio teams have on the overall perspective of games. And Ninja Theory straight up had the masterclass in audio design with Hellblade 2. The cinematography of Hellblade 2 just feels like it would be a straight up movie. And yes, there are some aspects of the cinematography that I will rag on later in the video, but I think overall, there are several moments throughout the game that had some completely amazing moments that were captured through the writing and cinematography that these writers were trying to have you feel. I think there are aspects of the story that definitely hit some bright spots, but also didn't reach its full potential. But there were quite a few times where I was playing the game and just was taken back with how cool or epic a moment felt when the camera shots were hitting a certain way. It just felt gorgeous. I'm not going to spoil any story elements here, but one of the first major boss fights you have is fighting against a Viking Raider in the middle of a storm in an epic battle of one-on-one -on -one combat, and it's just badass. I think most developers hope for moments like that, and they can stick with someone forever. I just think back to classic story moments like in Halo 2, where Master Chief destroys an entire space cruiser on his own, or when you get to have the face-off between Solid Snake and Ocelot fighting on top of a battleship in the backdrop of a war, or Link walking slowly to defeat Skull Kid in the middle of the world ending, in the final moments of the game. And when I look at the cinematography of Hellblade 2, it just comes off as one hell of a collage of cool moments with its combat. Each battle scene gave me a straight up adrenaline rush cutting from moment to moment, like I was going through hell, killing one enemy and then you go ahead and fight another enemy. It's like an epic fight scene that you would see something from the Game of Thrones. And it just gives off that unique camera work that makes this game feel fun. Yes, there are critiques I will mention later on about the issues with combat or the issues with some of the story elements, but Damn, that camera work worked out very well with what they're trying to pull off with the cinematography. And my hope is that there are going to be other games that follow in this messaging or follow in this standard. Do you think Hellblade 2 sets the new standard of what we should expect in the future of next gen games? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like this type of content, hit that thumbs up and subscribe to support the channel. Now back to the video. As much as I had fun with Hellblade 2, I have completed two full runs of the game and there are some clear criticisms. Now let me be clear, just because I had some negatives thrown in this video, I'm not going to accept the you're just a fanboy argument because there are some clear problems with this stunning game. When looking at sequels, one of the most difficult problems that are common is whether or not we see much difference or additions compared to the original. When I first played Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, I was taken by its amazing use of audio design and interesting story aspects. Yeah, combat was pretty simple, but it wasn't easy. It had quite a bit of puzzles and some bugged out moments. Then when I played Hellblade 2, it's nearly identical to the original. I mean, I get it. The game looks way better than the original was on the Xbox One and PS4, but they took the same gameplay concepts, the same movements, and even identical puzzles and just added them to the sequel. So if you're looking for an expansion of the franchise in smaller areas, you really aren't going to get that here. And yeah, that will lower the overall grade mainly because the game has been in development for roughly five to seven years, and it seems like there was little to no change that really happened overall. What's even more wild is the fact that the combat in some cases took less from the previous games and actually was worse compared to Hellblade 1. In the original, you actually had the ability to have combo attacks, charge attacks, and as you progress through the game, you even learn different abilities. And you know what? We actually lost all of that in this game. You fucked it up! I've heard of games that limit the amount of new things added to titles, but never did I see a game cut out aspects to save on time. I mean, the only games I saw that from were for Madden. Now, I understand that game development is way harder than it was back in 2017, and the cost of development may have gotten higher, but the expectation is that you were to find some new additions to make this game just feel different compared to the original installment. And I'll be honest, I made this criticism for several sequels that limit their expansions. God of War Ragnarok was not as good as its previous game, but even they created some new variable weapons to change the loop even just slightly. Every Super Mario 3D game always created a variation that makes it unique 
in its own way. But for sure, that is a struggle for games with a successor. We compare it to the original and say, okay, what did you change? And if there isn't a lot of change, then we will automatically criticize it, rightfully so. Like one of the easiest things they could have done to change up the combat would have been to give Senua new weapons to use or at least abilities as she fights against the giants to give her some sort of power up heading into the final levels. At least then it gives Senua more of a progression as a warrior to give her something that she's gaining toward. I mean, she's a straight up tank taking shot after shot, giving her something as a progression would make more sense. And it's just easy. And to further the lack of major changes from the previous game, what really does annoy the crap out of me about this modern era of gaming is the longer time for development for shorter or less content at launch. And let me be clear, Hellblade 2 has some really impressive aspects overall. But when you look at the time to beat the game, the game took me roughly five and a half to six hours to beat on dynamic difficulty and a little bit longer on hard difficulty. Well, if you compare this to the previous game, this technically is shorter by at least an hour. What? And what makes matters worse is that it honestly feels like I was walking more in this game compared to Hellblade 1, which means the gameplay is technically even shorter. How can you do this? This is outrageous. It's unfair. I mean, I'm not expecting Ninja Theory, which basically has 80 devs, almost equivalent of an indie studio in size, to make an open world mega RPG experience like some other games. But it's not the end of the world to make a linear experience that is larger than its predecessor. I feel like a lot of the game time and funding went to the overall look of the Unreal Engine 5, which is phenomenal. But if I was a game developer, I would have taken some of that funding on maybe looking into making some additions to weapons, or powers, or better yet, another level, diving into the story of some of our new characters so we get more context to the overall story. I mean, I don't know, something would be better than nothing. And to round out this section, I'm going to jump into the story. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm not going to give any spoilers because I'm not a complete douchebag, but I'll give my feelings about what bugged me as well as what impressed me about the story overall. Don't get me wrong, this story is in my bad section, but I'm not saying the story was completely bad, like some complete psychos want to call it. It had some great moments, but then there are times where I was just like, what the hell just happened? So generally the overall story focuses on Senua's journey to end the slavery of her people from the Viking Raiders. Her journey takes her across several factions and tribes, and she meets a solid crew of heroes and some crazy ass giants. I mean, some pretty basic story stuff so far. And obviously Senua is going to go through some of her own issues throughout the story, where she is heavily internalizing all of her problems, which is causing her to have some real mental breakdowns, just like the last game. But I feel like the problem I had with this game was the lack of details into the why for a good amount of the plot or the background or feelings of the surrounding characters that travel with you. There are a crap ton of giants that you need to fight and they sort of give a wishy-washy reason for why the giants came into the picture, which unfortunately gives me heartburn, especially when the cutscenes are creepy and great overall but the aspect of why are they here or how never actually gets answered. And the only way you ever get any sort of background info on the character's feelings about these certain situations is if you beat the game entirely and then unlock the other's narration mode, which furthers the story by adding an element of the hero's perspective using the narration feature, which is so much better than the original version. This is great, but the problem I have is why don't we just go a little bit deeper into the levels and get more perspective from these characters? We get background content about why they're acting a certain way or what they're experiencing during these times. And it feels like every time we get a moment that can be great and we get some real character development, they just cut it short and just have us go back to walking again. You can take more time and allow these story features to develop and allow us to get a little bit more of an emotional connection to these characters that we're walking with. The story of Hellboy 2 is the tale of two sides. One being a fantastic analysis of emotion of Senua's journey from the first game that just hits so well in certain aspects and additions with more characters. They're then giving you blue balls because they cut you off from fully seeing the potential what could have been if they expanded more on some of these aspects. And it just hurts. So when looking at Hellblade 2, it's both exceeding expectations in certain areas while also not being able to meet the potential of what people were hoping for. I had played the previous installment and definitely enjoyed the world that Ninja Theory had crafted and was literally surprised with how unique they approached the game development with its mastery of audio design. Unfortunately, with the ultimate console warring psychopaths out there, 
giving some ultimate takes, it's hard to really see through all this bullshit with how good or bad the game actually is. Especially if you're an outsider to this series and are trying to get an objective opinion about the entirety of this game and you're only stuck on the cesspool called Twitter. The Xbox fanboys will call this the greatest experience they have ever seen while the Sony fanboys will call it an absolute disgrace. But as a fan of the previous title, I can objectively say that this game does set the standards for a great experience going forward for a next gen era. But at the same time, they could have done a lot better on certain aspects to make this game be able to compete with the other major console exclusives out there. In my Galactic Grade, I give Hellblade 2 an 8.3 out of 10. I think when you look at what Ninja Theory was seeking to accomplish with this game, it meant all hopes in showing the graphical fidelity of what we consider a next-gen experience. Being one of the best-looking games I've ever played, the sound design being top tier, or basically a tier of its own, and it hits these bright spots at its best. The cinematography really brought some cool moments that made me take it that, damn, this looks like a straight-up movie. But at the same time, the game does fail to reach the same level of combat or complexity of the story to make it feel all that different from the previous game. And in some cases, the game missed out on easy opportunities that left me perplexed as into why didn't they just take the layup and add more story elements to get the game feel longer than its predecessor. If you love the first Hellblade, then there's a 95% chance you will very much enjoy the sequel. I think this game does set a new standard of what we should expect in the next generation of gaming when it comes to its fidelity and the overall look and experience. And if I think this is the last game of the Hellblade series, it had a solid conclusion, but I can always see a sequel come down the line at some point. But if you like Viking Raiders and want to experience a next-gen game, Senyo is out here clapping some giant cheeks, and I think you will enjoy the overall game. If you like game reviews, go check out our recent review of X Defiant, where we give our overall opinion on whether this game can actually compete with Call of Duty. Go check it out in the end screen and let me know what you think. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys. <laughs>